welcome to Dragonfly Trading. My name is Carrie. I'm a full-time trader and also a mentor for struggling traders in the crypto and forex markets. Today's video is going to be an update on Bitcoin and ETH. We're going to take a look at the bull and the bear case. I have opened up a free Discord. If you are interested in that, the link for it is in the description below. Also, as per many requests, I have extended the course sale through the month of May. You would like to be able to navigate these markets yourself without relying on anyone else's analysis. Take advantage of that and invest in yourself. All right, so we are on Bitcoin, the two month time frame, And as you notice, we put in a very bearish candle. This is a bearish reversal candle. Now, does that mean that we're definitely reversing? No, we'll have to see what this next candle does. But I would like to see the red line at the bottom of this low candle not be taken out at 56,500. If Bitcoin can keep from taking out that low, it could potentially continue bullish. On the monthly time frame, Bitcoin also put in a bearish candle, a bearish engulfing. This look is not too good, but it doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't recover. Again, the next candle will have to see if Bitcoin can put in a bullish candle. The low at 56,500, I would really like to see that hold. And that would prove that Bitcoin is in recovery mode. Now, on the two week time frame and also on the weekly, Bitcoin put in a bullish reversal candle. This is a very good sign on a weekly time frame. Again, we'll have to see what does this candle do after it. Just because we get a bearish candle or a bullish candle doesn't mean that it's a tell all. It needs confirmation. So turning this candle green on this weekly time frame or the next one and holding the weekly 21 moving average would be a very good bullish sign. Taking out 56,500 this week low and also taking out its 21 moving average on the weekly time frame would be a bearish signal. Let's talk about Bitcoin's bullish option first. And as I've said in pretty much every one of my videos, if Bitcoin is in a bull run and it plans to continue, we must not break the prior correction. If you look in the prior bull runs, every correction, whether it used the prior one as support or not, did not break the prior correction. This is very important in bull runs. So regardless if we are in a series of ones and twos, if this is a three and a four, it doesn't matter. Bitcoin must absolutely not break through this correction. This is going to be our absolute tell-all that this leg is getting a partner. If Bitcoin is able to hold, whether it comes deeper or not, and it pushes to the upside and it breaks this high, this becomes our new invalidation correction. There is many different opinions about what wave Bitcoin is in, whether it's in a series of ones and twos, or is this a one, two, three, four? Or is this a one, two, three, four, five? All of that doesn't matter. What matters the most is that this structure is not broken. I can't emphasize that enough. So, with that being said, let's talk about what the bear scenario is. And those of you that have watched my videos have already seen this, but those of you who are new, the bear scenario would be that Bitcoin is going to pivot now or after one more hit to the high 
and it's going to put in a B wave. This is what we call the expanded B pocket. What it would mean is that this three wave moved to the downside was an A wave, that this is a B wave, and that it's going to come to the downside in a C wave. What we can hope for is that it doesn't take the A wave low, and that still would be a very bullish correction of a higher low and a higher high. This would mean that we would see the biggest wave that Bitcoin has ever made. A little more bearish scenario is that it doesn't hold the A wave low and that it comes deeper to the downside, breaking it. This would still be a sideways correction and would lead into a very big bull run. So remember, if Bitcoin is able to hold this correction and push to the upside, it mustn't break the prior correction before it. Coming down sharply and breaking this correction will be our clue that this bear scenario is happening. All right, so the bull case is that this correction is complete and that this move to the upside was a five wave move. We'll talk about that more when we get on the lower time frame. If Bitcoin plans to make this move the start of something, it needs to hold the golden zone, which we will also dive deeper into when we get a little closer into this correction. But basically the line in the sand is these wick lows. Bitcoin absolutely must hold above it and push to the upside and at least give this five wave move a partner. This would get Bitcoin up higher. So when this connector gives itself a partner, Bitcoin can stay in this sideways consolidation. The more bullish option is that this is a start of something as a wave one and that this is a pullback for a wave two and that it's about to go bullish for a big wave three. An alternative option is that Bitcoin is coming deeper in a bigger WXY structure. This move to the downside was three waves. This middle section connecting for an X wave. And then Bitcoin is about to put in three waves and hopefully hold this prior correction. Okay, so in my last video, when this wave was being formed, I said that Bitcoin needed to hold for a fourth wave and push up for a fifth wave. That was because Bitcoin only made it to the 1.618. That is still my bias, but my bias is not always correct. And I can force this wave to be complete by making this a little triangle for a fourth wave. And this would have to be its fifth. Now, probability wise, this may not be the start of something and be three waves. If Bitcoin is able to hold the 618, there is a chance that it's the start of something and it's a one and a two. Its alternative is that it's an A wave and a B wave. So let's see if Bitcoin can hold the golden zone and at least give five more waves to the upside and get itself back up into this correction. All right, so let's take a look at ETH on the weekly time frame. On the weekly time frame, ETH is threatening to lose its 21 moving average. If it was to drop down to the 50, which is in green, that would still be okay for the bullish scenario. Not that I want to see that happen, but this is the correction that would be completely breaking market structure. ETH has, has to hold this correction as support. Again, you could argue that this is a nest of one, two, one, two, one, two. You could argue that this is a three and a four. But either way, 
ETH has got to hold this prior correction. So the best scenario for ETH is that it's coming down in a WXY structure. Holding the one-to-one -one extension is a must. Holding the 618 would be even better. But the absolute line in the sand is around 2300 this support. Looking at ETH, it had a chance for this wave to be a diagonal, but it's already coming potentially too deep. This is the invalidation point. So the probabilities of Bitcoin being the start of something are less because ETH is threatening to not be the start of something. So with that being said, it's more likely that both of them are completing a WXY structure and need to put in a three-wave move and reset themselves to the downside. At that point, we're looking for V-shape recovery and for them to reclaim their floors. Flip them back to support. We need Bitcoin to reclaim its floor. I hope you enjoyed this video. Think about the free Discord. And if you watch this video to the end, let me know what altcoin you would like me to do an analysis on in my next video.